Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, we are in the uh, dirt. What do we ever dasher? Door, door dash. This old door dash here. Yeah. Uh, Dasher's uh, the golf cart. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it might be a little loud, so we're gonna try to speak up a little bit. Um, one of my subscribers did send me some microphones for the phone. Oh yeah. yeah. So I definitely want to try them. I'm probably gonna bring those on my little trip. Well, guys, big news. Big news. Big. Huge news. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> the reason why we are in the DoorDash today is uh, we just dropped the Chevy off at the Chevy dealership. Yep. Uh, figured why I'm out of town. Might as well go ahead and take it to them. That way uh, they said they won't be able to get to it until next week with the holidays, which I figured. Uh, but they're going to check it out and uh, see what's going on with the Chevy. And uh, there's something, I've got a lot of comments about, you know, the bigger truck for towing the tractor and everything else that I get one. Right. Um, there's actually something in the works that's behind the scenes, but it's going to take a couple of months to make that happen. So, uh, I'll talk about that whenever we get closer to it, um, but I'm very excited about it, and uh, it's going to fix all of my problems. Man, it's, yeah, that's all a, of my problems. It's huge. <laughs> Probably one of the biggest game changers has happened in a long time. Yeah, yeah, by far, by far, and it's going to literally fix all of my heavy towing issues 100%, and I'm looking forward to it and excited about it, but... Um, there's a time restraint thing with it and all, but, uh, you know, I, I'm in no hurry. Uh, I just uh, need to take steps to get that resolved because yeah. even when I get the Chevy fixed here, it's it's just not built to tow the type of stuff that I have to tow. Uber is one heavy girl. Man, I ain't, I ain't <laughs> trying to weight shame her or nothing, but the girl got a little bit donkey donk behind her. You know what I mean? So, and the, and the trailer you got to put Uber on ain't a lightweight. <laughs> no, no, it is a heavy duty trailer. And then uh, whatever you load it, and I still need to go get the tractor from Oklahoma. Oh man, I forgot about that. And also uh, another tractor from somewhere else. So Ooh, that that one, that man, one, that's a game changer. Yeah, that one I actually be done with the Chevy. Um, it needs to happen before uh, what's coming up. So I'm gonna have to go do that one, and honestly, the Betty Boo one might happen before as well too. I don't know. It depends on the time restraint with that right. one. Um, I do want to get out to Betty Boo. It's actually gonna be a two tripper for Betty Boo. There's no way that we'll be able to get both, even if we take both trucks. Okay, yeah. With yeah. all the stuff that we gotta pick up there, so I might make the first trip because it's a lot lighter of a load. And then come back just for the tractor because that tractor needs some work. We got to get the brakes to unlock from that before we oh, can even get right. it loaded. Uh, so good, good fun stuff before we even get it loaded. Yeah, right? and I need to put a winch on my trailer and stuff to help tow it up on the trailer. Right. There's a lot that's got to happen to get the tractor to the mountain. And then I got to reach out to one of my diesel mechanic friends. I know I got one. And. Uh, see if I can get it running because that big tractor will be a game changer uh, for the spring because I would love to put the auger behind that big old sucker. You know it just so happens uh, I, I happen to know somebody who just came up here recently who has a, 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 a fair amount of experience getting his fingers greasy. Yep a little bit of greasy. Um, you don't want him to uh, drive you around the mountain. You don't want him to be an Uber. He might drive <laughs> off the <laughs> He might <laughs> drive off the mountain. <laughs> Uh, we love it. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all guys, uh, I'm not going to spill too many beans, but uh, I'm going to spill a little. <coughs> y'all might want to pay attention to Junk to Gems. Um, Keep chain. an eye out. Because uh, <laughs> something might have happened. Something might have happened. And uh, Arkansas is still giving it to him. Still giving him little kisses. Little kisses. <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a nice little honey you got right there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I seen him last night over, over there, uh, Mike's, and uh, he had a funny story to tell. Yeah. So I'm not gonna tell it for him, yeah. but uh, yeah, pay attention. Mary, uh, Mary didn't think it was so funny, but hey, Gary thought, hey, you gotta laugh if you don't want to cry. <laughs> so Mary wasn't Mary. 
merry was not very merry and bright. Nah, nah. <laughs> the Christmas spirit was not upon us. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I mean, Gary did think he was a reindeer. He said, <laughs> and could just. He said I was just following my red nose with the <laughs> GPS, and uh, well, the sleigh didn't fly. <laughs> Love you, Gary. We're sorry, buddy. But uh, up here, we gonna mess with you. We gonna mess with you. Yeah, that that's hilarious. So we got a lot going on today. Uh, I had Mike follow me here in the Jeep to the Chevy dealership. Uh, I went to one of the small <laughs> local ones. Hopefully, I don't uh, regret, regret decision. that decision. <laughs> uh, I was reading your mind. Yeah, it's a. Uh, We'll see. Um, I don't know nothing about none of the dealerships around here and stuff. So, right. Um, it is under warranty. If they don't get it right, then they're just gonna have to keep working on it until they do. I guess. But I need my truck back uh, because I just don't like hauling fuel and stuff like that in here. It makes it smell like gas and all that, and all those little cans leak sometimes. Yeah, and that smell is gonna linger forever. I mean, we we used to do it all the time in Lissa's Vibe, and it, it wasn't that big of a deal because there was a lot of room in the back, and it's a flat, hard plastic, so I'm not worried about the the gas itself getting into the carpet, but it still drips a little bit, a spill here and there. When you got eight, nine, five, when you got 40 to 50 gallons of gas just floating around in the car, man, it is, that'll give you a headache five miles down the road. And it's scary. Rolling time. I mean, bomb. basically, you're rolling on a bomb. <laughs> you know? And like propane, like, right? I got like a 100 pound tank that needs to be filled. I'm, the seats come down and I can do it, but still, I prefer not to have 100 pounds of propane sitting in my lap. Yeah, yeah if it's. You know? if it, let's say it did have to go off, I'd much rather go off in the back of the truck. Yeah. Give us a little blockade before it explodes in our face rather than right behind us. And Although I did own a steel company for a long time and I am smart enough to know that you put the nozzle towards you, that way if it does explode, it goes that way. You know what I mean? Well, I think, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have hauled a lot of oxygen and acetylene around the country. Um, so you definitely always want to make the projectile uh, project out. back. And, uh, <laughs> hopefully, ain't nobody back there. Because I have seen an oxygen bottle explode and go through a job site and literally go through a concrete wall. We um, so. in in Jacksonville, and when I lived in Florida, in Jacksonville, Florida, we were on a rooftop on the beach with uh, with this AC company I was working with, and we were bringing in a rooftop unit. They're called RTUs, rooftop unit, and uh, they had the crane and everything, and they were bringing the new unit up and set it down everything was good and then they were pulling the old unit off the roof it's a typical day you know that's just what happens it's easy peasy you're used to crane operators you know and um come on move down hold the load. I, I was down, actually the load. Come i'm on the edge right and i'm, I'm sitting there doing doing this right yeah and i, I, I knew scope that out. i knew that mean scope out right and i'm doing this and my boss is like what are you doing get out of the way come on come on i'm like that's not how the op crane operator knows what to do he was looking at me all weird that's not the story. Anyway, the story is when we were taking the old unit off, right? The guy that started working with us brought a pair, uh, brought a set of torches up, and we have oxygen settling torches in the HVAC trade as well because we have to sweat in the brass and everything. Well, when you do a rooftop unit, there's no brazing needs to go happen. There's no torches needed, so we were like, "Buddy, we'll call him Buddy. Buddy, I don't know why you brought these torches up here. We don't need them." So he just stuck them on top of the old unit coming down well when that unit was coming down somehow some way one of the straps shifted and that bottle of the whole case of oxygen selling torches fell off that and it was a three-story building and when it hit the bottom it was a it was a literal bomb it would boo and, and the oxygen bottle like luckily we were in between a couple of buildings and it didn't do too much damage but man it put up a hole in the side of one of them brick buildings where it just smashed on. Yeah, yeah that sounds great. What he should have did is been like, all right, operator. Yeah. <laughs> Easy down. Easy, Easy down, Easy baby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I used to be a rigging and flagging was happening. Right. Um, actually, when I was about 18 years old, I worked for a uh, precast company out of Atlanta built the uh, Olympic Stadium at the time there and also worked on the federal building 
that they was replacing the one that they tried to bomb. Okay. There in Atlanta. And uh, I actually ended up being the ground foreman because I was so good at rigging oh. and stuff. And that architectural precast, you'd have to have rolling blocks and chain come-alongs and chain falls and all kinds of stuff doing it because it had to go up perfectly level to go into the side of the building to be welded off. Right. And I just had a knack for being able to kind of eyeball it and just say, all right, you need to come up with that a little bit that way when it stood up as nice and level. Right. And then be like, send it. <clears throat> and, uh, and we did tower cranes there. And tower crane flagging and stuff is different than your traditional cranes. They got a couple of different hand signals and stuff. But um, yeah, and also with the radio, like, come on, give me 20 foot. Come on, baby. Yeah. I'm coming on down 20 20 foot, 20 foot, give me come on, come on. And y'all wonder why I say come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually um, my first my first experience of even putting anything on a crane was, was with you when uh, and you're showing me how I like to, to pull the tape measure across the beam and find the middle of yeah. it and take your uh, the little soapstone and make the mark and that's where you choke it up and stuff like that. I remember all that. Yep, back in the day. Actually, when I started ironwork, you could still ride the steel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> back in the day you'd put one choker in the center and you'd have this long eye beam and uh, like me and my brother used to be uh, connectors together and one would slide in or slide out based on the weight differential to balance out the beam and then the crane would pick you up like a seesaw and fly you onto the building. Uh, OSHA stepped in uh, shortly after I got into the industry and shut that down. I uh, No more I'm flying. <laughs> and we also used to be able to ride the headache ball down on the crane. Whenever we get done, we just grab a hold of the cable, yep. stand on the ball and ride it down. OSHA got rid of that too. <laughs> for a good reason but couldn't it was fun couldn't imagine why it was fun i was a little uh a little wilder back then and uh i wouldn't do that now i, I don't have the nerve i used to have back right. in my early 20s <laughs> the good old days man start telling stories like that <laughs> where you start aging yourself <laughs> you start feeling old i've i uh you know when when you came down to the house last night uncle david came down to the landing and uh gave the kids uh, some Christmas presents that he had picked out and stuff like that and we had some pizza, pizza and hung out and we were talking about Talon yeah. and uh, Talon will be 15 years old this year in April and he is three years away from being a man. young man I told him last night I was like Talon <laughs> almost 18 years old how do you feel about that and he was just like he didn't even know what to say he was like huh <laughs> yeah Talon we was talking about it this morning too uh Talon is a really good kid, and uh, he's still a kid. Yeah. He still has that kid, kid feel to him, we've, right? We've been able to try to retain a lot of a lot of Talon's usefulness and not to let the kids grow up so fast. Yeah, which is in this day and age, awesome. Uh, but now it's that age where it is time to flip right. and start learning the responsibilities and what it takes to be a man. Yep. And uh, I was actually talking to Mike this morning. Uh, this year, I've already planned on uh, really spending a lot more time with Talon. Uh, just doing little projects with him, a little uncle, nephew time or whatever. Because you know how it is with parents. I, I mean, it's like, wah, wah, wah. They're always in your ear. It's and, work. And it doesn't always hold the weight. Yeah. De they don't retain it because, of, you know, it's what, the death ear or whatever they yeah. call it. You, you know what I mean? So... And when it when it comes from the parents, you know we're making them work. Yeah. And we don't, you know, we're we're making them do something. So he's not going to be so and have to do it so yeah. fast, you know. But if Uncle David brings it along, oh, we got this fun, cool project we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. It's not work no more. All of a sudden, it's a fun, cool project. Yeah, well, you know, Uncle David's going to make it fun anyway. <laughs> because, uh, we like to have a good time. That's right. Come on, pal. But yeah, I, I really want to just start kind of, you know, spend a little more time with my nephew and stuff. He's about to. Uh, be a grown man and also I want to spend that time with him because as they get older all of a sudden they get less time for you yeah and uh, yeah. and I know that from experience I mean I got to just about lasso my son these days you know he gets so busy and uh, so yeah I'm gonna take advantage of that why, why I got it and so well uh, and, and I hope he gets him a little part-time job here soon um, yeah. that, you know just start learning to work with other people and what is required to actually have a committed job where you're working for somebody you don't know I don't yet, know, you know what, what I mean? the age limit is here in Arkansas for part-time jobs I believe 15 
I think they can drive at 14 now in certain scenarios. In, in Arkansas, period, the state of Arkansas, you can get your learner's permit at 14 and your actual driver's license at 15. Yeah, so I, I believe if they could do that, then I can almost assure that they could start working at 15. I'm sure it's limited hours and stuff like that because yeah. of schooling and, and stuff like that. But even in Florida, you can do it at 15 years old. 16. In Florida, you got to be 16 yeah. to, to get a they job. change that? When, when I started working... I had to be 16 years old uh, and uh, and in school or whatever. I had to fill out this piece of paper to start work. I, my first job ever was a, was a dishwasher at a a restaurant. And then I moved to the uh, stocking groceries at IGA. And in both places, uh, <clears throat> you had to be at least uh, 16 was the minimum age. Hmm. Yeah, when Destiny was looking, it was 15, but it was only... Uh like 15 hours a week or something like that. Yep. It couldn't work very many hours or nothing like that because uh, she was trying to get on a Publix, I believe. And uh, yeah, yeah, man, hey, I started working. <laughs> I was working in the fields. I was throwing watermelons <laughs> and zucchinis and picking squash and tomato. I made me some cash money. I, I was full blown at 15, but I was making me some cheddar. At, at 14, the summer in between, because my birthday is September, the summer in between 13 and 14, I also uh, did the watermelon fields in Bronson. I, uh, I used to. That was taxing. I used to throw watermelons all day and I was tall, so I was the one that bumped the trucks. Okay. And then I would work during the summers, I would work at night loading the semis. Oh. Like, I, I, I've been hustling, making money since way back in the day. Right. And then, uh, actually, whenever I was 15, I would work in the fields during the day and I would wash dishes at the restaurant that I eventually owned years later uh, um, because my mom worked there and the lady that owned it loved me and, as, and I would get paid to come in and I had to do my homework. And she'd set me down, I'd be on the clock doing my homework. Whenever that was done, I was the dishwasher and eventually I ended up becoming the cook because the cook called out and I took over one day and I went ahead and took that position. Yeah, let me get that. And then uh, also she would come in sometimes and take me to go get fresh seafood from Cedar Key. Oh, and man. we'd stop off at the bar. I know it ain't good, but we'd stop off at the bar and she would bet money on me playing pool <laughs> and stuff. And if she didn't care if she lost or won, she just liked me sitting there and she would yeah. sit there and have her beers and I'd play pool. And uh, I love that lady. Uh, her name was Yoshi. And uh, she was like uh, probably one of my first mentors. You know, she's so smart. Taught me a ton about business and stuff like that. And then years later, I ended up renting out that same building and doing my sports bar. Yeah. So talk about full circle. Man, that's crazy. My whole life, uh, when I well, when I moved to Bronson in the beginning, uh, that was always a seafood place. Yep. Yep. And then uh, I got uh, or I got older, and matter of fact, when I moved down to Zephyr Hills, where 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 and stayed with you, yeah. it uh, it shut down. There it was nothing. Yeah, because she died. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah, and then Levi's grandma ended up buying it. And then so and That's then I I, ended up I moved away, and then when I came back. You owned it. And I was like, "What? It's a sports bar? What the heck?" <laughs> and then when you got rid of it, uh, it actually became part of the children's table, yeah. uh, which is like a food pantry in, yeah. in Bronson. And uh, and the lady who actually used to run the children's table, uh, she just recently passed away. Yeah. Uh, she was she was a great woman. She was also like a a big foster mom to the community in Bronson. Uh, so Miss Frida. You're loved and you'll be missed I know always. Miss Frida. Yeah, that's that's who it was. It was Miss Frida. She uh, she was a mom to a lot a lot of kids in Boston. Yeah. yeah, we love you. It's crazy how those things go full circle. I mean, just like with me getting my GED at that college uh, remote site, yeah. and then I ended up being the one that was over all of the remote sites for that college. <laughs> Whenever I just randomly pulled in there one day to get my GED to prove a point to my daughter. That's so that's so funny. Yeah. It's my so life, awesome. My life has been a, a whole lot of series of full circles and stuff. And now I'm a YouTuber in Arkansas. <laughs> I, I don't know how that full circled, but uh, it I, full circled when Destiny pulled out her phone one day looking at YouTube videos, and you're all like, "Why are you always looking at YouTube videos?" <laughs> yeah. Now you know. Yeah. Well, I guess it's full circle because, once again, 
I called you and brought you with yep. me. Yep. And I did that same thing in Zephyr Hills a long time ago when he was a kid. So, yeah, full circle. It's kind of crazy. We're going down memory lane today, <laughs> guys. Uh, also, uh, if you've made it this far in the video, well, thank you. Uh, touch base on this briefly again. And I'm going to keep doing that for the rest of this year uh, until whatever's going on stops. Definitely check to make sure that you're subscribed to our channels, all of them. Uh, Tim actually did a call to action video yesterday on his ramblings and gained 130 subscribers that wow. were unsubscribed from him. So it is definitely going across a lot in this niche. Um, I don't know if YouTube has done a purge or something like that. But I am still, even after I put out the video uh, earlier this week, uh, I'm still getting a ton of emails saying that people are not subscribed and being unsubscribed. So I don't know what's going on. It happened to Lisa and I. We, uh, Lisa and I just celebrated 17,500 subscribers. Like our own personal little thing. You know, we were excited. We were talking. And this was days ago. And then we woke up yesterday at 17,499. Yeah. Like man, we we lost like fifteen subscribers in two days. It's like, wow, what happened? Did we did we make you mad? <laughs> yeah, it it's YouTube. Something's going on with it. Right now, we on the back end, we got an analytics thing to tell us uh, on average about how many subscribers we gained for twenty eight days. Yep. Mine typically is anywhere from three to four hundred to a thousand on average. Uh, most of the time, always three hundred is like very low. For the last month, mine has been at like a hundred. Man. And that has never Damn. happened since I was here in Arkansas. So YouTube is steady unsubscribing people for some reason. I don't know if they're doing like a yearly purge and it's just, I'm sure they're not individually doing it. I'm sure they right. ran some kind of update or thing or purge or something like that. So it's very important to like, subscribe, comment, do all of that. But even people that comment all the time are telling me they got unsubscribed. Yeah. So I don't, I don't really know what the answer is. Um, I'm just going to keep putting out content every once in a while. I'll mention it to you guys, and uh, sorry for the inconvenience. It's definitely not me, right? Um, but it is definitely affecting things and my numbers and everything else. And uh, this is a expensive time of year, so it's a bad time for that to be happening, especially with me trying to get this land yeah, bad. at the same time. We so need all of them subs. I need all of them. I need all your support. Um, and I tell you what, since you guys made it this far in the video, we'll drop a little nugget for you as well. A little, little bean growing, a little, little jack in the bean. We, uh, I know a lot of you already know, but we did go ahead and put a down payment on a carport to go over the passport. And uh, it will be arriving January 2nd. Yes. And uh, and guess what? We don't even have to put it together. All we have to do is film because they're sending a crew out to put that together and set that up. So that's super exciting. Nice. We'll be able to keep some of that ice and rain off the carport. I see. Or off, the, see. off the camper. Yeah, that'd be that'd be big for this winter. And uh, you just about got all the foam done. Yeah. I. <laughs> So, I still got that one piece of foam to put in the front of the thing. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah, just to <laughs> let it know that he ain't done. Put some pressure on me. <laughs> no pressure. But, but yeah, man, it's 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 a nice morning. It's cloudy. It rained last night a little while. It's supposed to be getting rain like all. It was supposed to be today and tomorrow. Yeah. Also, I'm hoping that it doesn't rain tonight because I fly out in the morning and I don't want weather to delay my right. trip. Yeah. And, make my layovers longer and all of that so hopefully i can kind of sneak to south carolina it can do its rain thing while i'm there and be nice and clear for me to fly back on tuesday yeah um because i am coming back tuesday flying out saturday coming back tuesday just a short little trip to go visit my family i thought about staying longer but with winter coming and all of that i just got so much going on yeah um i decided to just do a little short trip I've gotten all my Christmas here done. Uh, like Mike said, I went uh, last night and had pizza with them and dropped off with all the kids' stockings and got them a little something to munch on. Yep. And then uh, I did that the day before, or the day day before, uh, over there at Simple Life Reclaim and Country Road Cures. I did uh, one with them. 
that uh, it wasn't no parties or nothing like that. I had some people come in. I wonder why they're doing them all individual. Hmm. There ain't nothing. There ain't no smoke there. There ain't no smoke there. It's just everybody is busy. Oh. 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 Little fender bender. Wow. You got a three-way three -way fender bender. Uh, you never see that here. There's never no traffic. Wow. That, that was wild. You got to be a bad driver. <laughs> <laughs> you got three cars that hit each other here because that's the most I've ever seen you here at one time to begin with. <laughs> Am I wrong? I've never seen more than one car <laughs> at, at a time, time coming ever. through. Yeah. It's actually an inside joke of mine, his, Lissa, and the 41.36. It's like, man, you see all this traffic today? There's like two, three cars. <laughs> yeah. And we're talking about going 30 minutes and seeing like two cars. So the fact they just had a fender bender. They might be waiting a while because they're waiting on someone to show up. The popo might think that that's a practical joke. <laughs> you know, they might not even think that's a real call. Uh, that's funny. It wasn't that serious, guys. That's why we're joking look, about look, it. Look, look, slow down, slow down. Look, look, look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I'm looking at the place where. Uh, look, look. That's where he hit. Look, he boom! Funny, huh? he, look, he he jumped. He it. sent it. <laughs> And then hit the other one. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, y'all need to go check out Jump the Gems. I'm going to force him to put that on. I was asking him last night. I said, Gary, did you film any of this? He's like, no. I went and got my camera last night and I was going to film. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, this needs to be filmed. <laughs> You're a YouTuber, Gary. This is epic footage. <laughs> I mean, I know it's sad and I know it's embarrassing, but you gotta get it in. I kind of want to see a reenactment. <laughs> I'll get the drone up for that one. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So my plan, guys, is it's probably a little bit louder here. Speaking of which, how's the volume been riding in the uh, in the Jeep? In the Jeep, because um, this is definitely, I don't record a lot in here. Uh, I'm probably gonna go to Little Rock tonight. Uh, go ahead and get a room and uh, that way I don't have to drive at 1 o'clock in the morning to the airport and deal with all of that and drop the truck off or the Jeep off and all of that and just in case also if I have any kind of mechanical issues on the way there or whatever right. it all happened today where I can actually get help because uh, ain't nobody waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning to come rescue me I mean uh, I will if you hear some <laughs> I just got to make sure I take the phone on and yeah. put it on ring instead of on vibrate. It ain't that nobody won't. It's just a matter if I can reach them. <laughs> that, that's the thing. So I'm thinking about just getting a room and a, I don't know, room. I would say cheap room, but there's no such thing anymore. Yeah. A cheap room uh, tonight. And that way a I'm A convenient in, room. Yeah, a convenient room. That way I'm in the area. Um, I'll get it close to the airport. And uh, that way I can get up at about like three o'clock and, and go instead of having instead to leave one, here at one o'clock and then still be rushing because even if I left here at one, it's about two and a half hours. You know what I mean? And then I don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow. It's the holiday season. It might be booked up even though it's not that big of an airport. I mean, who knows? I always try to get to the airport two hours before I leave. I don't right. like to be in a hurry. I, I, I like to be back by my gate where I know I'm going to be and all of that. I ain't trying to miss no flights during the holidays and right. all of that. And get stuck in the airport for two days. And he knows something about that. Mm. <laughs> Maybe yeah. missing your plane in Las Vegas and having to sleep over in the airport. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and I know a couple other people that's been through that there. So I try to avoid that. And uh, like I said, I was going to have him take me, but it's not too much. It's like 20 bucks a day to park the car. So we thought it was going to be significant. I figured more. it'd be at least 40 bucks a day. Yeah, so it's going to cost me a little bit, but uh, just convenience and uh, to not inconvenience people and all of that. I just think it's... Uh, oh, gas. Yeah. Imagine uh, that. Imagine that didn't even notice that I was almost out of gas. Good thing I just went and got gas. The gas light just come on, you heard it, bing! Like, oh yeah, you should have stopped. So, uh, I just don't want to inconvenience people and stuff like that, so. But I have been chatting with my family. They are super excited. My niece has got this whole itinerary thing going on, and I'm just like, I don't do itineraries. 
That's almost as bad as uh, Tim's, Tim's list, list. <laughs> and stuff. And my brother, me and my brother, were joking about it. You know, we we're like, well, we'll do the best that we can with the itinerary. But my brother's like me. But we'll just, we'll just go. We some, we see something cool or glittery. We're like, <laughs> we're gone. And uh, yeah, so that's what I got going on. Ah, we've been chatting for 30 minutes this yeah. morning, guys. We gave y'all... Yeah. I didn't talk to y'all yesterday, so we had a lot to talk about. I actually took yesterday off um, and didn't do nothing um, because I felt like that was going to be the last time I could do that for right. quite some time. And uh, so I'm not mad at it. But I missed you guys. I love you guys. I hope y'all have a great, great, great Christmas weekend here. Um, I will be doing these all weekend long, more than likely. Um, just kind of keep y'all in touch. Uh, don't forget that I'll be going live with my niece uh, Sunday morning at 10 Eastern time, I nice. believe. And I will be going live on Christmas night at my normal time. Okay. With my family, uh, SKW Lifts, Life with Mars, Learn with Nana, myself, my brother, and uh, whoever else is there that wants to jump in, in camera view or whatever. So it's going to be a good time, guys. And I will be... If it works out, I will be filming two different Fired Up Fridays uh, on this trip as well. I'll be doing my milk yattos, and then we'll also be doing a Wagyu prime rib. Wagyu prime rib, wow. Yeah, yeah my brother went big. Dang. He came out in the pocket, and uh, he's really looking forward to grilling with his brother again. Uh, it's one of my brother and myself's favorite pastimes is kind of grill and chill and hang out with each other. It's been since 4th of July and you didn't really get no quality time yeah, there. Nah, but we was just producing. <laughs> we was producing on that one. But yeah, uh, so yeah, we're going to grill. Uh, we used to grill all the time together and you know, now that we're so far away from each other, it's, it's just a special time when we actually get a chance to actually do it. So, looking forward to it, but I love y'all. You got anything else? Uh, I'm not gonna volunteer or anything else. You guys keep an eye on Drifting Dreamers 5. We got some uh, some new stuff coming out shortly, and I think tomorrow we're gonna be uh, doing some inside the shows. Shows. Today we do have a video coming out a little bit later, and uh, we did a little bit more road work. Road work. Got the uh, or no, that was that. Was, I can't even remember what video. The we just had a video come out yesterday where we did a little bit of road work. And uh, today's video is actually something that Lissa's trying out for the very first time. She's doing a month review, and uh, it's going to be the month of December wrap-up and a mail call with some awesome gifts and cards that you guys have sent to us. So keep on the lookout for that a little bit later. Nice. All right, guys, do something nice for somebody. Uh, reach out <coughs> to somebody you ain't talked to in a while, Sweet. especially nowadays, guys. And during this time of year, is a rough time for some people. And uh, your phone call might make all the difference in their holiday season. So definitely reach out. Love every single one of y'all. But always, guys, and I do mean always, keep it real. Come on.